Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. I thank you for joining me. I this is the show. This is the show that I was talking about that I've been working on, and uh, it's an interesting one, to say the least. I was surprised I went in the direction that I did on Tuesday's show because I really wanted to get this one out. But now I understand why. Because within the last couple of days, another storm after another storm, another storm has formed. And I began to see the bigger picture. You know, in scripture they talk a lot about uh, visions, you know, and you hear about how in those days, Young men will dream dreams and old men will have visions. And, you know, a lot of people don't even really know what a vision is because I've never really had one where I'm walking down the street and all of a sudden, wow, you know, I get this, this big vision. But you know really what a vision is. If uh, It's actually like a daydream. It's almost, if you, you let your mind wander and all of a sudden like kind of thought kind of just takes form in your head. And we all do this, but let me tell you something. That's almost like the power of creation, if you will. It's like it's in that moment when you're not contemplating anything that, you know, the divine can almost come on in and just inspire you. And it was in that kind of a moment that I had seen uh, a really beautiful picture about all of this stuff, one after the other, you know, from the first hurricane to the next, to the next, to the next. I had said in um, the video that I did just a little while ago about the engineering of storms, which was almost about two weeks ago. I talked about Hurricane Harvey and how Harvey meant battle ready. And I explained that, you know, symbolically, I saw a, a, a brighter picture of the total devastation, you know, that is, has landed in Texas and has once again really divided people away from their possessions and stripped people of their wealth and stripped people of their nonsense and brought people down to their knees to the fact where they have to actually work together. They have to, you know, come together as one to get out of this. It is in these dark times, in these moments, where we remember what is most important of all, and that is brotherly love. And that's why we see people banding together to help each other. But there's a bigger picture. And it's crazy. I wanted to do this video, but I, uh, I did the one that I did on Tuesday instead. And now I know why. So there's one storm, Harvey barreling down on, you know, Corpus Christi. And I explained that it was the body, the body of Christ. That's what Corpus Christi actually means. And that the storm Harvey meant to be battle ready or to be battle ready or it was a blazing iron like as if an iron rod. And it was, you know, a time of testing, I had said, a time of, of testing. And in this video, I explained how that things were going to get really claustrophobic and, 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 and stuff was going to get a little bit nutty and that we we're going to be worried about war and we we're going to be worried about this and we we're going to be worried about that and it was going to become a time of just frantic fear. And every single video that I've talked about this, I had said that we need to realize how excited we should be because of it. Because this is ushering in another day, which is why that 923 sign is so just poetic. And now, after this one hurricane, after another hurricane, after another hurricane, let me tell you something. When I explain to you what these hurricanes mean, their name means, and how it all comes together, oh my goodness. <laughs> I hope you are buckled up, people, because you're going to need it. Let's talk about Hurricane Katrina. Yeah, that's right, 12, uh, over 12 years ago. Whew. I remember it very well because when it was barreling down, I was working here. I was back in, in, in Long Island. And at that point in time, I was working for that major television network, that faith-based television network. And I, um, I sent an email off to the owner of the network and I said, I'd like to write a spot to get everybody to come together and, uh, and donate. And I, you know, I, I mentioned a couple of organizations that were first on, to, you know, first on the spot to arrive always. And I was told no. Now the irony is we needed these bumpers anyway. It was just fill. You know, I'd fill it with, with, with songs and just inspirational little things. They were kind of like commercial breaks. 
So we needed it anyway, and it would have been a wonderful thing to do. But the, uh, the response that I had gotten back was, you know, we're going to find out about our partners and how we can do that, because it's always about in these institutions, you know, it's always about building up man's kingdom and all that. You know, and it's all fueled and, uh, by greed and lust for power and more. What broke my heart was all these big name pastors, you know, the Pat Robertsons of the world coming together and saying that now this storm came down because of their sinful life. Do you still think that um, Katrina is punishment from God, God for a society that's becoming like Sodom and Gomorrah? I believe that New Orleans had a level of sin that was offensive to God, and they are uh, were recipients of the judgment of God for that. The newspaper carried the story uh, in our local area that was not carried nationally, that there was to be a homosexual parade there on the Monday that the uh, Katrina came. And uh, the promise of that parade was that it was going to reach a level of sexuality never demonstrated before in any of the other gay pride uh, parades. So I, I believe that the judgment of God is a very real thing. And I believe that the, the Hurricane Katrina was in fact uh, the judgment of God against the city of New Orleans. And I saw one after another after another doing this. These guys, these you know, multi-millionaires who really haven't really given a thing in the grand scheme of things. They had talked about the sinful life and that it was God's wrath. And I remember when Haiti happened too, you know, that was, that was another thing, that was God's wrath. The irony is they were all so quiet when Harvey came down on the body of Christ, Corpus Christi, and then basically ushered in uh, a flood that we have never seen, historically speak, biblically, only to be followed by another storm that's even bigger behind it, named Irma. Now, what's, what's interesting about Irma is that Irma is now headed towards Miami, took a little bit of a different path. Irma means something, too. It actually means goddess of war or war goddess. Ironically, uh, Athena is the goddess of war, and Athena was known for, you know, the strength and her wisdom and her strategic ability, which I think is crazy because so many people are talking about geoengineering. And they're talking about how these storms possibly have been seeded and steered. And I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying it's not that. There's a lot of footage that makes you question, right? And it doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, these mega, mega storms, one after another, barreling down on the United States, right after that first eclipse came across. Like I said, it's interesting. I said that we would be in for a time, the United States alone would be in for a time like never before, right? So the goddess of war, Irma, is going to be barreling down on Miami. Now, what's interesting about Miami is Miami actually means the people that are downstream or the downstream people. That's where it comes from. Sort of like how Moses was sent downstream to, into Egypt. The people downstream are those that are a little bit less than, maybe a little bit more ignorant, if you will, as the allegory goes. You know, if you're upstream of something, you don't get all the crap that's sent downstream on you. So this storm, this goddess of war, war is barreling down on the people that are down. I think that's interesting. Harvey was telling that the body of Christ needed to be made battle ready because war was coming to the people. Now, I was going to do a video on that alone until I talked about, you know, these religions and, you know, just the, uh, 
the, the inbreeding and the corruption that uh, kind of goes along with it. And how today is a day where people aren't going to, they're going to be running from the churches. They're going to be coming to uh, know the truth. They're going to be coming and asking, teaching the truth no matter what the cost. A lot of people give me a hard time because I don't tell you what to believe. And why don't you say Jesus more, Jacob? Well, let me tell you something. I wouldn't know what I know if it were not for Jesus. I wouldn't know salvation if it weren't for Jesus. But you know what? A lot of people don't even know what salvation is. Because they have to want to know. You got to want to know that there's more. And I know there's more. Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So you're hoping for something. You're hoping for a connection with more. You have faith that it's there. Faith is the evidence of those things that are not seen. So the fact that we have faith in more, like we know innately there is something more within us. That's the evidence that it's there. And that's the interesting, you know, because this world, you know, it's... uh. It's kind of like an illusion, it's big, a big lie, you know, that new world order. How can you get out of that system, right? How do we snap out of it when we're uh, so controlled and so imprisoned and so dumbed down? And on every area, we're under assault to be a mindless drone that just goes off and does his job and doesn't think about anything else but that. Very few people, until they come to my channel, a lot of them who do come to my channel, very few people have ever actually said the prayer, teach me the truth. They've been going to church, a lot of them, for many years. But they pray for things that, you know, we all pray for. Better health, I want to be a better, you know, better this, help my family, help my friends, help me get through this. It's always like a greedy kind of a prayer. But no one ever says, teach me the truth. No. Best time to get to your knees is when you're knocked down. And when you're knocked down, I'm telling you, there were a lot of people when that hurricane was barreling down on them. And there are many more that are going to have the same uh, thing happen. They will find some sort of faith. They will, and they will band together after the storm to pick up the pieces as one. Twelve years to the day, Harvey lands, you know, and floods everything. And it lands, and then like a day later, the 12-year anniversary of Katrina floods everything. I think it's even crazier that we're going to hear of the devastating floods that are going to happen in Miami and Florida on 9-11. I think that's interesting. But I believe that it's all connected. You know, all of these numbers, these, these important numbers. There's gonna be a fulfillment of sorts and it's happening. And that's why I think September 23rd, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a marking point in the sky, people. That's what it is. It's, it's, people are cluing into it. They're like, well, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Let me tell you what's going to happen. Life's going to go on. But at that point, because we have a little bit of time left for another storm and then another storm and then another storm to hit. If it does hit, I'm not saying it's going to hit. One here, then one there, then one here, and then one there. And then who knows? What can happen with Korea and what can happen? All of these things that we're supposed to be so afraid of, they're the things that are coming to liberate us. In the grand scheme of things, there is more. This isn't all there is. We're all physically going to die one day. But I don't believe that's all there is. And I think all of you, I think deep down you understand that if you exist, you know, you close your eyes, you exist. You can't prove that anybody else exists, but you know you exist. And you exist. How do you stop existing, right? You go to sleep, you stop existing. Your conscious mind, at least, but you're still there. So there's a message in these storms, like I say. You know, there's a message in everything. Now, this is where it's going to get really interesting. The storm that is following Irma is Jose. talked about the smashing of the grape. I talk about the pressing of the wine. 
I've talked a lot about how without the suffering of the oyster, there would be no pearls. Without the manure hopped on top of the flowers, they wouldn't be as beautiful and the fruit wouldn't grow as sweet and taste as good. And if a tree isn't producing, if like you're, you're gardening and your plant isn't producing, you dig up the ground around it and you basically, you, you shake the earth of it and you shake and you pull out and you rip off all the dead branches and you shake it and then you replant it again and you hope that it's going to produce fruit. That's what's been happening. That's what I've been talking about. So is it any coincidence that Jose means that God may give increase? The body of Christ, Corpus Christi, is being made, has to be, it's going to be tested to see if we're battle ready. That We're going to be torn, right, by the strategic goddess of war, whether it is engineered, because she was known for her wisdom and her engineering of great warful feats, but that we're going to, we're going to see war next, right? have this, we're going to have that. But the best part is that God may give the increase. And then I find out today there's another storm, which is why I redid this, uh, this whole video tonight. When Danielle came home and she told me about the earth, the, uh, I was telling her about how I saw that all of this was going to really test our metal. See what we're, you know, I've been talking about the testing of our metal and it's going to, it's going to see like, what are we going to do? It's going to bring out the best of us. It's going to bring out the worst of us. Just as Katrina unearthed all those coffins and all those dead bodies came, this is going to happen. All the nonsense and all the crap and all the, the stuff that we buried deep down, it's going to come to the surface. Just like when a silversmith is holding silver over the hottest part of the flame. For the metal, I can't, I can't imagine the metal likes being brought through that fire. Like we're brought through the fire. That's what we're going to be brought through when it's going to come more. We've got like seven years symbolically from when that darkness came across our land to when the darkness comes across the land again, putting an X, a seven year X over the United States of America. Some have called it uh, the whore of Babylon because of Lady Liberty and that she sits on many waters. But you know that the whore of Babylon in scripture, the many waters that uh, this system, because it's called the beast system, the carnal ignorance system, the lies, all the nonsense, the control system, our prison system that has got us in a prison that we can't see, touch, taste, or smell, got us all believing that this is all there is and worried about losing our house in the storm, not realizing that that's our salvation. That's gonna bring us together. That's gonna help us to shake this off so we can enter in to that promise, that new day. And a lot of people are gonna enter in. And I hope that you all are going to enter in with me. Because you know what Katina means? That God may give increase, Jose that we may be made pure. Isn't that crazy? Man, don't tell me that all of that is just some random coincidence. And don't tell me I'm crazy for seeing a spirit in the natural, seeing a lesson 
in the story that is our life, seeing the bigger picture. So listen, this is the best part, okay? You don't need to fear it. You don't need to fear it. Because I'm telling you, it's not going to be as bad as you think it's going to get. It's going to get pretty bad. I've been saying that. I have never said it's not. I got a little criticism for saying it. But I never said that we should enter into this time fearfully. In the grand scheme of things, it's just like a movie being played out. and We are just playing that part. Elon Musk would say that we're, in, we're an avatar in some game and virtual reality. I'm not saying. But what I am saying is we are experiencing this story and it's about to get really, really interesting. So I hope each and every one of you are buckled up and I hope each and every one of you are ready. That's the reason. What do you think I keep saying buckle up every time for? Buckle up for the last over the uh, last year because the ride is going to get rocky. But when it's over, Man, you're going to laugh, you're going to tell each other stories, and we're going to remember that it's all just like a bad dream, and that we're all going to wake from it. And it's going to be like that, that mother who gave birth to that child after those hard times and that labor. You just think that you can't take it anymore, right? Because that's the time we're entering into. The last couple of years, I've talked about these birth pangs here and here and here. But now it's like you're getting those pains one after another. You got Harvey, you got Irma, you got Jose, and you got Katina. And then what next? You got you got China, you got Russia, you got Korea, you got come on, people. It's just time to give birth. And I think the cool thing is, it's gonna literally happen up there in the stars. On September 23rd, where Jupiter comes out. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch my video on 923. My friend Blake. Now, my friend Blake has not seen any of my shows for a while. Um, he is in a place where he does not get internet reception at all. He went off and he's on a journey. He's on a pilgrimage and he's finding himself, right? And he's seeking God. Now, he went off to seek God. And him and his wife and their beautiful child, they're, they're, they're doing this together. Now, the amazing thing is I just got this letter from him. And now he hasn't seen my video on September 23rd. He doesn't know anything about it. We haven't had any correspondence. I wrote him one letter and I sent him like an essay or something. I wish I could have sent them more, but life is difficult. It's hard for me to get to any of you on email or comments, but you know, I try. But so today, his wife, she took pictures of the letters that were sent and I read them and guess what it was about? About 923. It's about to go down. I hope that you're excited and I hope that you are also reaching out and remembering that, I mean, right now I'm okay. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but there are a lot of people that are not okay. Keep them in your prayers, reach out to them, find out the best way to support them. I keep putting up the Red Cross and I'm getting hammered for it. And let me tell you, the only reason why I did that was because I've had some experience with them and they are always there. No matter how you look at it, they're always there. They're always they're good people that work for the Red Cross. Regardless of how corrupt the organization is, there are people that are on the ground, they're handing out blankets and they're doing this and they're doing that. So, but I don't know that many great charities. I'm not, you know, well versed in that stuff. So I think you all should get together and decide who to send your money to. Don't gotta be sending it to me, but you want to support the channel, support, support them. Support them. Because we're gonna need it the most. We need to come together. This is going to be an interesting time because the millionaire and the pauper, they're all going to be on the same boat. And I don't think it's going to matter who has the Rolex and who has the ripped sneakers on. I think the only thing that's going to matter is that they're both alive and they're both holding each other up above these nasty waters that this system sits on, keeping us drunk on our wine. This, uh, this corrupt system, which has gotten us all to forget the most important thing in life, which is to love the system 
which has got us all self-obsessed. <laughs> Man, what a great movie. I love you all. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.